we are now looking at uh, some of the important areas of CFA level 2. I will first talk about uh, uh, economics where uh, I will talk about uh, 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 one of the uh, question type uh, that uh, you can get. So in the economics, uh, uh, you can get a question where the uh, growth rate out for output is asked. So growth rate put output is rate of technological change plus alpha growth rate of capital plus 1 minus alpha growth rate of capital. Now uh, 1 minus alpha which is multiplied into growth rate of labor is labor cost upon total factor cost which is given to us. From that we can calculate alpha. And then we can have plugging the data from a question we can have rate of technology change plus uh, uh, alpha into growth rate of capital plus 1 minus alpha. So uh, this formula uh, might be uh, played around. So the question uh, could be given to you uh, in a way where uh, 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 you could be uh, uh, given say uh, an information that uh, uh, the growth, uh, uh, the potential uh, growth rate uh, is being uh, asked from you. So the potential growth rate is uh, expected technology growth at alpha into expected capital growth at 1 minus alpha expected growth in labor and you uh, might be uh, the labor cost upon uh, total factor cost is, uh, uh, is uh, given to you uh, uh, and uh, the other. So uh, labor cost upon total factor cost would help you to get to alpha. So that is the first part. Uh, beside this. Uh, uh, in, in the economic section, um, uh, very less uh, uh, things could give you trouble. Uh, uh, in, in fact, uh, this is the uh, only formula that uh, uh, could uh, give you uh, uh, trouble. So, uh, besides this, I, I don't think one formula that uh, is again used is uh, a neoclassical growth theory where uh, you would say that sustainable growth rate is theta upon 1 minus alpha and uh, theta is uh, uh, growth rate in technology divided by uh, 1 minus alpha uh, which is uh, labor share of GDP growth rate which just looked at. So theta and alpha are uh, uh, those kind of ratios uh, which could say that uh, sustainable growth rate uh, G star is equal to theta 1 minus alpha plus uh, delta L where delta is uh, growth rate of labor. So we could be given a TFP growth rate, labor force growth rate, labor cost proportion of total factor cost. Labor force proportion of uh, total factor cost is 1 minus alpha. Uh, TFP uh, uh, total factor production growth rate is uh, theta uh, and uh, 1 plus 2 percent is growth of uh, labor. So uh, the first part is uh, uh, growth rate in technology divided by uh, labor share and the other is uh, labor share. So uh, those are uh, uh, the two questions that uh, could be asked. The other formula uh, uh, that uh, could be asked is uh, growth is a t into k to the power alpha 1 minus alpha. So uh, those are the topics in the economics uh, that you can get. Moving to the next topic uh, in this revision session, uh, what is the difference between uh, pension and uh, pension expense in IFRS uh, and US gap. So in general uh, uh, this topic uh, becomes important. So in the pension expense uh, um, uh, you have to do a lot of things. So uh, a total periodic cost uh, uh, and how it is uh, seen uh, so components of uh, periodic expense in uh, PNL is current service cost, interest cost plus expected return, amortization of actuarial gain, amortize of past service cost. But there is a trick here with like UFRS and GAP. So under UFRS expected return is the same as discount rate and amortization of actual cost under US GAP uh, the losses during due to change direction and difference are recognized as OCI and amortized through corridor method. Under IFRS actual gain losses are recognized as OCI are not uh, uh, going through. So this amortization of actuarial gains always go through OCI. Only the difference is uh, uh, whether you are going to amortize or not and in US gap it's corridor. Amortization of part service gap uh, 
past service calls in the US gap uh, only increase in PBR resulting from plan planting that the benefit of margin and therefore past service immediately expands so amortization of uh, past service cost are immediately expands uh, so that is the, the difference uh, in the pension expense so uh, the question could uh, be on those things so total pension uh, cost uh, uh, in other words uh, become a tricky part uh, now we have HHI index uh, binomial tree and with and without uh, operating losses DW test and persistent factor so uh, returning back uh, to talk a little bit more about uh, this uh, difference between recognition components so current service cost uh, in US gap uh, can come under income a uh, past service cost uh, in US gap OCI amortized over service life and the IFRS it comes income uh, interest cost comes under uh, income in both expected return uh, comes under income in both uh, actual gain and losses like uh, amortized portion in income statement unamortized in OCI uh, and all in OCI, not amortized quality measurement in IFRS. So, uh, uh, so that that is how uh, we would uh, look at that. So, that's uh, that our pension uh, uh, cost. Uh, if uh, I look at a numerical. Uh, that uh, is about uh, pension cost so total periodic pension cost is uh, contribution minus uh, change in funded status that uh, is one way to uh, look at that total periodic uh, pension uh, cost is current service cost plus interest minus actual return uh, no figure actual losses come so we may assume them zero so those are the ways in which uh, we are going to look at so in, in uh, most of the questions, uh, periodic uh, pension cost is current cost plus interest cost minus expected return. So uh, 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 interest cost is PBO into uh, discount rate, current service cost, expected return on plan assets. Now uh, benefits paid, uh, the beginning PBO balance uh, plus uh, uh, the cost component minus benefit pays equal to PBO balance. Uh, so this is the obligation. Beginning PBO prices minus uh, uh, plus the cost of component minus uh, ending. Uh, the question specified there are no contributions in the ending fair value is equal to the beginning plus actual return uh, less uh, benefit paid. So uh, uh, that is the planned uh, asset way to look at that. Now I would uh, go to uh, uh, the binomial uh, tree. So we can have a look of binomial tree from uh, fixed income as well as uh, 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 from uh, derivative. I am first going to look at uh, from a uh, derivative uh, point of view. So uh, the up uh, step size and the down step size, uh, like what's going to be happen on the up and the down. If you assume 50 50 percent going down, it is one plus risk fee minus downside uh, minus uh, divided by uh, uh, up minus down. So that's how uh, from a derivative question and this is mixed with uh, generally uh, put call parity uh, and and then uh, used uh, uh, with that. So uh, uh, that is uh, how we look at that. So binomial models I am going to look from again from a derivative point of view. So. Uh, in a binomial you have the size uh, up and down so the up size is uh, uh, 1.33 and the down size is uh, 1 divided by 1.33 uh, the up probability and the down probability uh, the risk neutral probability of up and down I uh, just uh, talked about it is uh, 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 risk neutral probability of up move is 1 plus RF minus D uh, up minus D and uh, this neutral uh, down is uh, that now uh, uh, sometimes they uh, talk about uh, uh, the size which is I think e to the power 2 Sigma so I am uh, uh, searching for uh, for that size 
if I don't get it here, uh, probably I will uh, search from some other place. Okay. I will search from internet and show you. Uh, the other uh, place where you will get uh, the binomial tree is uh, the fixed income. In the fixed income part, uh, you have binomial tree often used uh, an interest rate. So, while you deal with uh, interest rate, you get that. Uh, in the interest rate, uh, yeah, in the interest rate, we have this uh, e to the power uh, uh, 2 sigma that I am talking about. So, uh, if you have 1 up, 1 down, 2 up, up, 2 uh, up, uh, down, and 3 uh, down, down, these are the possible things. Uh, then, uh, 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 starting point, the upper path uh, to a higher rate, then it becomes e to the power uh, 2 uh, sigma, and 2 times up becomes e to the power uh, 4 sigma. Let's... Uh, uh, look at a question where this uh, e thing is uh, used. So uh, suppose uh, uh, you want to calculate the interest uh, rate uh, uh, going up and down, then you multiply that with uh, uh, interest rate uh, 1 low and 1 up uh, is equal to e to the power uh, minus uh, 2 theta. So as earlier, there are two uh, deviations apart. So two standard deviation apart is uh, e to the power uh, two theta. Uh, this was uh, given in the numerical. Now, uh, uh, Durban-Watson test. Uh, the persistent factor just uh, steps down in uh, uh, r minus uh, g. Uh, uh, and uh, it it, uh, it is added on the denominator and there are many formulas in portfolio which you are going to see. I am now moving to uh, uh, the Durban Watson test uh, to talk about what is that uh, one more time. So in the Durban Watson test it is uh, in the quant part. So it is uh, a test of detecting a serial correlation. Uh, we test uh, error t versus error t minus t divided by uh, sum of uh, error t square. So Durban Watson is nearly equal to 2 into 1 minus r where uh, r is correlation between residual one period and the last one. Suppose you have a regression output which have three independent variables provide Durban Watson instead of 1.23. Uh, also suppose that the sim sample size is 14 at 5 percent significant determine if they are correlated. So at 5% Durban uh, Watson table n equal to 40 k equal to 3 k equal to 3 because uh, they have 3 independent variable and the sample size is 40. So alpha is equal to 40 k equal to 3. The upper and the lower critical values are 1.24 and 1.66 since the Durban Watson time is uh, 1.23 uh, you should reject the null and conclude that has a positive serial correlation among the error terms. Uh, inconclusive. Re reject HO conclude positive do not reject and inconclusive so uh, DW should uh, uh, be greater than upper limit uh, so H naught is uh, no positive uh, serial correlation so uh, if a DW is smaller than it, the positive test is inconclusive there is no evidence that positively correlated fail to reject the null hypothesis of no serial correlation. So that is about the Durban Watson test. Uh, the persistent factor I am going to use from internet, I am uh, moving to uh, uh, the portfolio analysis. So in the portfolio analysis, uh, uh, the syllabus keep on changing, but I will quickly uh, talk about a few formulas that you are going to see more often than anything. So in the portfolio analysis, uh, you have the market model uh, you have value added uh, which is alpha minus uh, lambda into omega square uh, the information ratio is IC into uh, root BR information ratio of A plus uh, B is information A square B square uh, it's a big chapter so probably I will uh, again go there so uh, uh, the information ratio is the measure of managers forecasting accuracy 
the breadth is the number of independent forecast uh, of ex exceptional return that a manager makes per year the information the fundamental law of uh, management uh, relates breadth and skill to the information ratio ir is equal to ic which is the information coefficient into root br which is the breadth which is the number of uh, forecast they are doing given <coughs> the level of uh, investors risk aversion uh, lambda the optimal level of residual risk omega star is equal to ic into root br upon 2 omega and the value add is ir square information ratio square upon 4 lambda or ic square into br upon 4 lambda uh, uh, let's uh, look uh, if i can get a question here on that so manager has information uh, coefficient 0.1 and makes a quarterly bet on 100 stocks compute the information ratio for the manager if the manager wants to achieve information ratio 0.4 how many stocks uh, would need to bet so IC is equal to 0.1, BR equal to um, uh, 4 into 100 uh, because he makes 100 per quarter. Information ratio is 0.1 into root 400. So that's uh, information coefficient and information ratio. Uh, next is Dharmesh Thakur equity analyst uh, currently follows 100 stock and makes quarterly uh, forecast. Uh, his information coefficient compute information ratio. If Thakur chooses to follow 100 stocks but with information point four, stock on new information ratio. So uh, current information is ratio is uh, 0.5 into root 400. New information ratio uh, is uh, 1 square plus uh, 0.4 square uh, and uh, 400 and you take a root. So uh, it's like a vector thing where you can take root of both. In the previous uh, optimal level of residual risk is uh, omega into IR upon 2 lambda. Uh, omega is equal to IC into BR upon 2 lambda value added is uh, IR square upon 4 lambda. Uh, a lot less numerical so uh, Dan Vancey is a manager with Optimus Capital Vancey is a market maker makes bets on quarterly about direction of market Vancey forecast are right 55% of the time uh, Mike Neal is an equity forecast Neal as a security selector makes 50 bets per year Neal has an uh, information coefficient of computer information of Vancey and Neal so Vancey's uh, uh, information coefficient is 2 upon NC upon N minus 1 so 2 upon uh, the correct he did so he did like 55% uh, so 2 into 0.55 minus 1 that's point 0.1 and his information is IC into BR so uh, that's how so once you get the information coefficient into root BR the information coefficient is uh, 2 into NC upon N minus uh, 1 if you want to revise some subject at the end just before entering the exam it should be a uh, portfolio analysis because uh, this is uh, more often seen if uh, I go uh, uh, into some more questions here that you can get uh, most of the questions here uh, uh, would be information coefficient and information ratio uh, value added is uh, IR square upon 4 lambda optimal level of residual risk uh, increases with breadth it's IC into root BR upon 2 lambda so probably I'll have a, a session upon on uh, these formulas uh, and uh, just before uh, this chapter uh, uh, there are many other uh, trickier things to uh, look at but uh, yes this uh, was uh, uh, one thing. I made separate video of uh, persistent factor, uh, which uh, you can uh, uh, check. Thank you for listening.